Hello everyone, this is Marco and welcome back to my channel. Today, after a very long time of promising to do this video, we'll be taking a look at the Hammond Collection Therizinosaurus by Mattel. I'm sorry it's taken so long, but I wanted to do this video with the best gear I could get. In fact, I'm recording with a brand new microphone and I have a brand new desk light too, and it looks much better. This way we can all enjoy this figure together properly. I would like to thank my good friend Martin, as always, for sending this figure over. And what better way to start this review than by taking a look at the box. So the box is exactly what we'd expect from a Hammond Collection figure. It's got the classic black look, it's got the name of the dinosaur and the Hammond Collection logo on the front, and a nice big window so we can see the figure itself. On the sides we have some pictures of the render of the dinosaur and some logos and on the back we have a nice photoshopped airbrushed version of the figure itself, a description of the dinosaur and some upcoming releases in the corner. I always find it funny that Mattel are painfully aware of how bad these glass eyes look and they always have to photoshop them a bit to make them look good. That being said, the glass eyes don't look as bad on this figure, but we'll take a look at it better later. Okay, so once it's out of the box, the body and the tail are disconnected, so all we have to do is just click them together. What's nice about this figure though is that you can unclip the tail from the body too, which means you can put it back in the box if you want, and that is very collector friendly. Okay, so having this figure in hand, it certainly feels really nice. It's got some really nice quality plastic all around, and it's pretty striking. It's got some really nice colors, and it looks like a collector figure. And at first glance, you can tell that this figure looks accurate to what we see in the films. And that is great because Mattel sometimes has issues with correctly portraying the characters from the films. You can have a look at my other in-depth reviews of the Hammond Collection figures and you'll see what I'm talking about. But again, at first glance, everything seems to be correct. All the proportions look right, the length of the tail, the size of the feet, and the general body shape looks just like the one that we see in the film. We can bring up the Jurassic World Dinosaur Style Guide for comparison and you'll see what I mean. And you can see how it portrays the dinosaur correctly. You can access this free document online and I'll leave a link in the description. So this figure is probably one of the best examples of Mattel's new design philosophy. They have been listening to the community and our critiques and have been steadily applying changes to make these figures look better. It's not every day a corporate company actually listens to their buyers and consumers, so we can all appreciate that. Thank you, Mattel. And a massive thank you to the community too for not being afraid and actually voicing our concerns. Constructive criticism and companies being open-minded enough to listen is an absolute win for everybody. Just look at that brand new Hammond Collection Allosaurus revealed a couple of days ago. That figure is a direct result of Mattel listening to the community and working hard. So I think we should start taking a more in-depth look at this figure and we'll start with the sculpt on the head. At first glance, the head looks perfect. It seems to capture the likeness of the dinosaur from the film pretty faithfully. I know someone isn't entirely happy with how it looks and has already done some Photoshop edits to make it look a bit closer to what we see in the film, but I think this is a really good sculpt nonetheless. Of course, Mattel have put a lot of effort into detailing the sculpt as they usually do. Their detailing is always spot on, especially with the brand new figures they've been releasing. It's got some nice scaly textures around the eyes and nice leathery looking textures on the bottom jaw and on the front of the snout. But on the very tip, there is a beak. Now the texture on the beak does look a little soft, definitely softer than any of the texture all over the figure. Taking a look at it from the front, its head doesn't look particularly wide and that looks pretty good. Same goes for the top of the head. I'm only mentioning the width of the head because Mattel does make the heads look a little bit thicker than what they actually are. But with this Therizinosaurus, everything seems to be correct. As you can see, the inside of the mouth is comprised of different pieces. The pink parts inside of the mouth are actually molded, pigmented hard plastic, and they're all glossed up to make them look nice and moist. This figure also has teeth. They're separate inserts cast in a different material. 
they're more rubbery, and they're pigmented with this off-white. In fact, all the most recent large figures have rubbery teeth, as opposed to the harder plastic ones we see, for example, on the Tyrannosaurus. I have previously explained why they changed to a more rubbery material, so I won't go into detail right now, but you can check out my other videos. I did mention it recently in the Hammond Collection Allosaurus Reveal video, so you can check that one out if you like. Now the next big thing about the head is the eyes. They do seem to look a bit nicer than usual, but I still think that the iris and the pupil are too recessed inside the head. If those elements of the eyes are too far back in the eye, most of the time, the figure will look soulless and as if it doesn't have any eyes at all. When they're so deep back, it affects the viewing angles and you can only see the pupil at a very specific angle. But if you move the pupil and the iris a bit further towards the surface of the eye, not by much, just a little bit, it certainly helps with the viewing angles and it does not look soulless. So here's hoping that Mattel can fix that in the future. That being said, these eyes don't look too bad at all. The glass eyes seem to function a bit better on larger figures, since the eye itself is bigger, which means that you can get a better effect. I am aware that a lot of people are quite upset with how these eyes look, in particular on the Therizinosaurus, and that's because they're not entirely accurate, as the dinosaur in the film is blind, or somewhat blind. It's got cataracts. And in the film, the eyes look quite a bit cloudy. I can understand why Mattel didn't want to add the cloudy eye effect. I think it's because they want to have a pretty figure that can be considered as a generic Therizinosaurus from the Jurassic universe. And I think some of the designers decided not to have cloudy eyes as that might spoil the look. So if you're bothered about this, you can always get some paint and just paint a little bit of cloudiness on the eyes. I'm not fussed, so I'm going to keep this figure as it is. Eyes-wise, that is, because I do intend on fixing a little paint issue that this figure has, but we'll talk more about that later. I won't be talking about the paint just yet, as I want to talk about the sculpt first, and then we'll delve into the paint later. So moving away from the head down towards the body, we can see the neck, and it's very detailed. It's got some nice feathery texture on the top, and some nice leathery texture on the bottom part of the neck. Going towards the body, the shape widens and we can see that the feathery texture gets bolder as it covers that nice shoulder blade. The feathery texture is present on the top half of this figure and on the bottom half it's all majorly leathery looking. And my goodness, that feathery texture is sculpted to perfection. It looks wonderful. Let's move down along the arms. You can see some of that feathery texture on the arm itself, but then we can see some scaly texture protruding too. And underneath that nice pebbly, scaly skin, there is some really nice muscle definition, all very tastefully done. The scaly skin continues over the hand and the texture widens, becoming scoot-like over the fingers. The scoots are nicely outlined and they also have some very subtle lines on them, adding an extra layer of texture, accentuating the organic feel of the sculpt. And now look at those massive claws. I absolutely adore how they've been sculpted out. They've got loads of tiny little cuts and crevices to make it look like they've been used. They look weathered and they genuinely look like they are the primary tool and weapon that this dinosaur uses throughout the day. Moving on to the legs, we can see that the feathery texture covers pretty much all of the thigh, all over the outside part of it at least. On the inside of the thigh, it's all scaly skin. I just want to point out how nicely sculpted the kneecap is on this figure. It has some really exquisite looking wrinkly sculpted skin covering them. We can see some nice musculature here too with the calf muscles. Moving down towards the feet, the scoots start picking up. The claws on the toe aren't as textured as the ones on the hands, understandably. Moving down the length of the tail, we can see some lovely feathering again, going down to the tip of the tail, whilst underneath there's that nice leathery look. So let's talk about the colouring. Overall, this figure has been mainly cast into two different colours, a nice base blue and some grey, with some exceptions, like the bottom jaw is cast in this sort of yellowy, off-white colour, and obviously the hand claws are a dark grey. 
What I really appreciate about this figure though is that it's got a lot of dry brushing on it. It's not every day we see dry brushing on a Mattel figure, but this is very special. It has some yellow dry brushing on the beak and on the front of the snout. It has a light blue sort of teal dry brushing over the eye and the cheek. And going down the rest of the body, there is this wonderful deep red dry brushing over all of the feathering. But my favorite part about this figure is the dry brushing on those hands. Look at that, it is exquisite. It's got some airbrushing on the arms as well. And the claws on the feet are painted, with the exception of the dew claw, of course. That is a signature Mattel move, and we've only seen a painted dew claw on a very limited amount of models that Mattel have released. Personally, I think a premium collector figure should have all of the claws painted. So I'm going to paint mine in and hope that Mattel in the future paint all of the dew claws on figures to come. So I think next we can talk about the articulation. As you can see on the head, the bottom jaw is articulated, but the top part of the head isn't. We have a ball joint on this part of the head here, a ball joint on the neck. I should mention that some people were upset with the neck articulation, as this is quite a big segment without any bendable features. People were hoping that the neck had some sort of bendability like the tail. It has these joints on the arms. These joints on the fingers, which some people seem to have issues with, but I'm totally fine with this. These joints on the hips, they swivel in and out and then these on the rest of the legs. The base of the tail is round, which isn't entirely accurate, but that's to accommodate for a ball joint, which allows you to turn the tail around like this, which it couldn't have done in real life, but never mind. And finally, a revised tail articulation. In all the recent figures, Mattel have redesigned the articulation in the tails. They've given them more segments and these can be posed very nicely. It's very satisfying. I should mention that the tail is cast in a hollow rubber, which allows for posability. And that concludes the review of this figure. I absolutely adore this figure. It is definitely one of my favorite figures that Mattel have ever released. Everything about it looks so striking and so pleasant to look at. It is definitely more accurate to the source material and it is a wonderful centerpiece for anyone's Jurassic collection. I think that Allosaurus might be my all time favorite. That's gonna take the number one spot for me. And the Therizinosaurus is gonna be number two, I think, followed by the Carnotaurus. But we'll have to see, only time will tell. I think I'll give this figure a 9.5 out of 10, which is a very good mark. I don't think it's a 10 out of 10, purely because of some little aspects like the missing paint on the dew claws and the head shape not being exactly the same as what we see in the film. I think for me to give 10 out of 10 means that it has to be perfect. So I think all of those aspects added together detract half a point, I think, but it's just so minor. This figure is amazing and I very highly recommend it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider dropping a like and subscribing to my channel if you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I would like to give a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. Seriously guys, your support really does mean the world to me as it helps me do what I love for you. You help me buy materials and most of all you give me a helping hand with improving the quality of the content of my videos. Even if it's just a small donation, every little helps.